Good morning, parents and guardians of St. Thomas More. <clears throat> As you know, my name is Brian Daly. I'm the principal of St. Thomas More, and I put out these uh, video messages periodically just to keep people engaged and up to date with what's going on at school. Uh, this little tradition that I do, I used to call it Daily's Daily Update at my previous school because I was doing them every day. Uh, so now we're down to, I think it's called Daily's Monthly or uh, Bi-Monthly Update. But uh, anyways, I just wanted to give you a few updates and, uh, tr and then also talk about a protocol. But unlike usual, I'm going to do something different and not talk about COVID right away. But I'll get there. Uh, so firstly, um, sports and extras are running, and I just want to say to everybody that I appreciated the parental response and the cooperation to last Friday. Uh, we did have a night game, and very few fans showed up, as I requested to the students, but I also know that I had a lot of parent parental support with that initiative. Um, long In the long run, I am continuing to be hopeful that we will eventually get fans back to the games, uh, student fans. Uh, but um, not, not, nothing's going to happen uh, by this Friday. You know, hopefully something will happen in the long run. Now, we also have, we're likely to be hosting playoff games and potentially even championships. So there is uh, a, an opportunity of more games coming. But um, the only way we're going to be able to make a successful argument is if we continue to get the cooperation of parents and fans. So again, I ask parents to support that school movement of not having your students come to the games this Friday and next Friday with the long-term hope that eventually we can return student fans to the stands for football games and indoor events as well. However, uh, just the local school principal, I can't make those calls. Uh, number two, uh, Catholic School Council. So <clears throat> also kind of commonly referred to as parent council. Uh, an email went out this past Tuesday uh, asking you to indicate that you're interested in attending. Uh, also would recommend and hope that we're going to have a, a number of people running for the leadership of that. It's not a big commitment. Like It's uh, supposed to be four meetings a year, the election being the first, so really three more. Uh, now, typically we meet more than that, but it's not a big giant commitment and it's not a big giant responsibility, but what it is is an opportunity for parents to get involved at their school, to stay informed, to have like a roughly a monthly meeting with the principal, a teacher, a student rep. And uh, it's been a positive experience in my experience since I've been a principal and doing it for three years. And it's one of those things with COVID that uh, we've gone online with these things, but in a lot of ways, it's a good thing because it's actually reached more parents. Like right now I have 22 parents who've expressed an interest and uh, all you have to do is fill in a quick form so that I have your email to identify that you're interested. I'll send you the invite sometime on the weekend. And it's a virtual meeting uh, at 7 p.m. on Monday through Microsoft Teams. You don't need any special software. You're just going to need to click the invitation. And uh, even if you're very untech savvy, you could even call in and listen and participate that way. Okay, so I try avoided it, but let's do it. The COVID update. Um, as you probably read my email this weekend, although it's part of what I want to talk to you about, I know that I've sent so many emails and voicemails that I'm frequently getting ignored. Believe me, I get the reports and uh, I know when you've hung up and I know when you've blocked me. <laughs> I hope you don't do that. Uh, but I'm actually trying to um, reduce my communication to parents uh, so that when you do get a phone call from me, you realize that it is important. So here's what I'm proposing going forward. Um, if, if we're just doing a notification, so when, when there is a positive case, I have to notify the entire community. Uh, I have been doing that via email, via voicemail, and a lot of you have listened to them. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to do a voicemail for the notification. But what I am going to do is I'm going to do a voicemail if you're a close contact. And what I hope that you will get is that if you hear a phone call and you hear my voice, you know that this one's worth listening to. Because I know when we had that run of COVID cases, we had uh, reported you a positive case to you four days in a row. Uh, some of you received four or five phone calls, depending on whether you were a close contact or not. And what we found at the school is some people who are designated close, close contacts actually came to school the next day because they, uh, the parents and guardians really didn't listen to the message. And given the uh, frequency of communication that we were doing, I understand that. So going forward, I just want you to know that if you hear my voice on a voicemail, I'm asking you to listen to it. 
I always keep my voicemails short. They're never more than a minute, but it's important because what it often will mean to you is that somebody tested positive in your son or daughter's class and, and you're, you're gonna wanna listen to that. Uh, so I'm not gonna be attaching my voice to the general notification. That's gonna be, still gonna be emailed to you, still gonna be available on our website. I'm not hiding it. I just, I'm finding that my uh, voicemails are being tuned out. And I, so I think I kinda have to protect that. So I just wanted to explain that to you. Um, the good news is that the outbreak was declared over this past week, and if you didn't read it, I'm not offended. I'll get over it. Um, and we're sitting at zero cases, and I just and and we've had ten so far this year, which is a big number. But I'm very thankful that all ten are back at school. Uh, nobody's uh, had uh, suffering long-term effects that I know of right now, and we're sitting at zero cases. Uh, those of you who are superstitious can touch wood. Uh, I'll just say a prayer of thanks. Um, and finally, uh, I just think going forward, we have to, in the COVID thing, we have to be vigilant but not fearful. Um, if it's what through the 10 cases kind of taught us that we don't need to be fearful, but we need to remain vigilant. And the four things I've been saying to students over and over again, and I'll say it to parents, if your son or daughter is sick, please keep them at home. I know a day or two of missed uh, class time is not a big deal, but if an infected person comes into school, knowingly or unknowingly, it has a blast radius of sometimes up to 100 students if they happen to take a school bus. So please, if your son or daughter is sick, just keep them home for a day or two. And if you're worried about the school impact, just contact us and we'll help you get connected and make sure you're not missing too much. Uh, secondly, um, we have to follow the protocols that we always do. So you have to do the screening. You have to be wearing your mask. We talked about that today on announcements. Students got to wear their mask from their nose to their chin. We have to do frequent hand washing. And finally, we have to um, maintain our distance. And, and that's a challenge at our school, but it's something we have to talk about all the time. If we stay apart, we can continue to keep our case counts low. And finally, just want to say in general, um, I really hope we can just get through this together. I understand that these are actually very hard times for parents. Um, you know, we, we talk about how it's hard times for teachers, hard times for the people who work in schools, including clericals, uh, custodians. It's hard times for all those things, but I know it's hard time for parents, especially working parents, um, and trying to navigate through this, this time. I hope that we can continue to work together to remain safe and to remain a, a cohesive school community. And uh, it is also uh, hard times for school administrators. Uh, I'm in my fourth year as a principal. I had a great year and a half before COVID hit. And now ever since then, every single thing I do is a project. So it's a hard time for everybody, but I hope that we all continue to stay together, work together. And if you have a concern, just email it into the school or call us, okay? And we'll try to sort it out. Because uh, we, we are a big community, but we are a community. We need to work together. Uh, but I thought with the Halloween for hunger coming up, it's probably uh, appropriate to finish with this prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. O oh God, when I have food, help me to remember the hungry. When I have work, help me to remember the jobless. When I have a home, help me to remember those who have no home at all. When I am without pain, help me to remember those who suffer. And remembering, help me to destroy my complacency, bestir my compassion, and be concerned enough to help, by word and deed, those who cry out for what we take for granted. Amen. St. Thomas More, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So again, uh, please take a look for my Tuesday email if you want to join us for a parent council meeting. And with that, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Have a great day.